Hey guys, welcome to the session by K21 Academy. In this session, we are going to learn about Kubernetes Ingress Controller. Now let us take a quick glance at the agenda. Firstly, we will be getting an overview of Load Balancer. And then we will be trying to understand what are the types of Kubernetes services. Post that, we will try to understand how to set up Ingress Controller and the working of Ingress Controller. And then finally, we will try to understand more about Ingress. So we have taken a clip from one of our certification training program on Docker and Certified Kubernetes Administrator, which is CKA. In this clip, our expert will talk about Kubernetes Ingress Controller. Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, we will discuss about advanced networking technique. And we have seen the service type. One was cluster IP, second was uh, noteboot. We can have another type of service, which is called as kind or type load balancer. In cloud, if you give the type as load balancer, it makes sure that your application gets exposed outside the cluster and you have a load balancer created in the cloud provider's account. So here, if you have multiple nodes, and you are willing to run pods which are exposed via a service giving the static IP address and I say my services type load balancer, I get a cluster IP address for my service, no doubt, because load balancer will give me external connectivity, but still if any internal communication happens, that happens on the private IP address. Because load balancer would be having uh, connectivity on the nodes. So we should have a port number as well allocated for it. So node port is also present. And then finally, I get a external load balancer. This external load balancer uh, would reach the node port IP address and we would be going from cluster IP to node IP to the load balancer. And if I want to reach from outside, my packet comes to either of the nodes. So my load balancer's backend is the multiple worker nodes on that port number 32050. If packet arrives on 32050, it's equivalent to node port type of service. Only you are not giving nodes IP address and a port number to your customer or client or team. Rather, you would be giving a single IP address, which would be the load balancer's IP address. And node ports packet would arrive to the service and from there it can be distributed to either of the ports. The load balancing can be done. And in case my load balancer is sending to any other node because of the load balancing, which is configured in the load balancer itself, my packet gets routed to the pod wherever inside the cluster it is existing. Difference here that you get the node port, you get the cluster IP, but you have an external load balancer created, which helps us in providing a DNS name or a single IP address, a single point of contact for my team or the client. In case of node port, I had to individually give this IP address and the port number, but here I would give a single IP address. If one of the nodes is not down as well, that's the responsibility of this load balancer that it does the health check of the backend systems and it removes the unhealthy backend. So load balancer will route our request to the healthy backend, which would be the healthy node in the cluster. And whenever packet reaches at 32050, it will get routed for this pod. If I have another pod, which has to be exposed with type load balancer type of service, I'll have another load balancer created and I'll get a different node port number, right? Suppose I have app two and it has, it it has got assigned 32051. So the other load balancer's responsibility is to forward the packet on the nodes in the cluster on 32051 port number. And whenever packet arrives on 32051 with the IP table rules and the service entry and all, we get to know which particular pod the packet has to be forwarded to. So here, what we are discussing, we, we have seen different types of services. First one was the cluster IP, second one was node port, third one was the load balancer. 
So if you say cluster IP, this is like a getting a private IP address. If you say node port, you get a private IP address, but you get an external connectivity using node's IP address and a port number. And when you say load balancer type, you get both of them and you get an external load balancer too. And external load balancers work is to transmit the packet to the node port. From there, it goes to the cluster IP address and from there it finds out the pods IP address. But I mentioned that as many applications I want to expose to the outside world, obviously this is not the preferred one, I would be creating a load balancer. And when I create several load balancers, it's very difficult to manage them. If I have 10 applications which have to be exposed outside the cluster, need external connectivity, I will have 10 load balancers. So solution to this is, these load balancers are layer four or network layer load balancer. If a packet comes, it can't open and check what exactly is being sent in the packet and where the packet has to get routed. But if we have layer seven load balancers, which are also called as ingrace controllers, this controller, the word controller, don't get confused with it. It's not like a daemon set controller or stateful set controller or deployment controller. This ingrace controller is just an application which has the capability of balancing the load or sending the traffic to the correct destination or the backend by looking into the content of the packet. So here, if you see, all the traffic of mydomain.com slash bar, any other traffic, my domain, uh, foo.mydomain.com, all traffic comes to the single IP address. This would be a layer seven load balancer. Packet will come to all different types of packets are coming to the same endpoint. And this guy has an intelligency to understand, okay, if it has come from mydomain.com, I need to send to service too. If it has come for foo.mydomain.com, I need to send it to service one. If it has come from other, then I need to send it to service three. That intelligency when we get, that is called as an ingress controller setup. So you will have a cluster, you will implement a lot of services for each one of them. You would be setting up load balancer. That becomes a tedious job. A lot of effort is needed and cost associated as well because these load balancers are cloud load balancers in a cloud account. So instead of doing that, instead of having a load balancer for each of the service, what we can do, we can create multiple services and these service will have just the cluster IP and the node port uh, cluster IP type of service, nothing else. And I'll create another application and a service. This is my application, which is an application layer load balancer application. How we have an Nginx web server, how we have a Redis application, this guy is meant just to do load balancing by opening the packet. So this is also running as any other application in the cluster. So if I have a pod and I want to expose it outside the world, I create a service and that service type would be load balancer. Then the load balancer gets created. Now I'll have a single load balancer created, but still I'll be able to load balance the traffic coming for service B and service C both. How? When the packet comes to the ingress pod, this ingress controller pod, it has a set of rules associated to it. It goes and checks the rule. What sort of rule? It has that if you're trying to open xyz.com, then route the traffic to service C. If you're opening web page of abc.com, route the traffic to service B. Like those entries are maintained, which are called as rules, and it's called as past based routing. So you are routing depending on what you have given. You can even write abc.com slash demo and have a different service altogether. I can say abc.com slash Christmas sale. I can have an entirely different service, which is showing a website for Christmas sale season. So this way I'm decreasing my 
workload, right? I just have one single load balancer and this is network layer load balancer or layer four load balancer. It can send traffic to the service of ingrace type of application. And this application has a kind ingrace associated with it where you can define your rules with respect to the services which you want to get routed for. And looking at this rule book, the routing of the packet does happen in the cluster. So any traffic which is coming for which we have written the rules over here, like xyz.com, abc.com, all traffic will come directly to this pod and from this pod it will go outside. So what exactly we are understanding that ingress controller is an intelligent load balancer, it is a layer 7 load balancer, some examples are nginx or nginx plus, they don't run as part of the cube controller manager and with ingress you don't directly reach your application services. If I want to expose my application, I expose it on the cluster IP level itself. My all the outcoming, out, the external traffic comes to my ingress controller application and from there it gets forwarded to the respective services. So let's understand what is this rule book which we have. That is called as kind ingress. So this kind in grace which we have, that is intelligent and we can write multiple rules over here and we can expose HTTP or HTTPS type of services outside the cluster. We can route traffic dependent on those rules which are there and if you're working on um, SSL termination or any name based routing, all those things can be handled by the ingress controller itself. So let's see the file. I'll show you the file. So when you spin up your application, your application doesn't is not different. Let me show you two of the applications which we are planning to spin. My deployment, this is one deployment which I'm planning to do. It has a container with hello world type of image. It is listening on port number 80. And the welcome page says welcome to Azure uh, Kubernetes service and I have created a service for this pod, this deployment, which is just cluster IP type of service. So this is one of the application, which is app one. The second application is here. My second application is also deployment kind, one replica, a single pod has a single container and it is also hello world type of application. But if you reach this, the address or the web page is different aks ingress demo it says and this service is also exposed on the cluster ip level so once this is created i can reach the individual applications using the cluster ip of the service but i want to reach from outside if in general i had to do i had to create two different types of uh, this service i would have changed the type load balancer and had two different load balancers instead of doing that we are creating a kind in grace. This is the rule book which is referred by the ingress controller. API version in which kind in grace was introduced, the metadata, name of the ingress, namespace to which it is applicable, any annotations. We had seen annotations in our first class, right? It is like a metadata. It's not giving it a unique identification like label for any identification purpose, but just for documentation purpose, if you want, you can have this. In the specification section, you have rules mentioned. And here we are trying to route packets for HTTP. Same way you can have HTTPS rules as well. In HTTP rule, you're saying that I'll send it to this path backend when someone is trying to access anything which doesn't have any any star if you're trying to open anything it will send it to aks hello world hyphen bar so if you're just giving the load balancers ip address with port 80 it routes you to the first application if you give slash hello world 2 it routes you to the second application so once the packet arrives of the ingress controller, it looks into this rule. If you have opened your web page with load balancers IP address, 
alone it will route here if you have given load balancers ip address slash hello world 2 it will route you here so it goes opens checks the packet what exactly you're looking for what route have you uh, specified over there and looking at the path which you have defined it would route your packet to those particular service and here you can see we have given the service name if this is the path route me to the service if this is the path, route me to the service. And these are the names of the services which we have created, AKS Hello World 2 and AKS Hello World 1. Once the packet has arrived on the service, we have already learned that service to pod mapping is done and we can send the packet forward to the pod and then to the container. So this way you are creating a kind in grace and you are spinning up an application of Ingrace controller like Nginx Plus, and you are reducing your workload and costing by exposing multiple application with a single endpoint of the Ingrace controller service. So this was all about the Ingrace controller and load balancer type of service. So we have put down everything about the certification, including the basic concepts that one should know everything like microservices and docker, networking, storage and app stack in docker, Kubernetes architecture and installation, security, troubleshooting and high availability, networking, deploying, application stack and advanced networking. In this 12 week roadmap, we take you from basics to advanced level along with the tips and resources for clearing the certification exam. We also have a separate team working for CV preparation and on job support. So if you want to become docker and certified Kubernetes administrator and want to learn right from basics to expert level, then we have a comprehensive step-by-step -step training for you that includes hands-on labs, including exam preparation and the most important part, one year on-job support. If you are interested in this program, then I would highly recommend you to attend our free class which covers most of the topics like why learn docker and Kubernetes and under docker you will be learning what is container and docker, docker architecture and under Kubernetes, you will be learning what is Kubernetes, why to use it, Kubernetes architecture and pods, highly available and scalable applications, and many other topics. So if you are interested in attending this free class, you can visit k21academy.com slash kubernetes02. You can also find the link in the description.